Welcome everybody. I hope you've all made it into the room okay and can take a, a few seconds to get settled before we go ahead and get started with everything. Uh, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. We are incredibly excited uh, to have all of you with us today. Um, so excited to hear Chris Goward from Wider Funnel talk all about landing page optimization and I know you guys most certainly are as well. I want to have a couple of quick announcements before I hand it over to the Wider Funnel team. This webinar is being recorded, so have no fear. If you want to be able to, um, you know, rewatch this or you need to leave early or something like that, this is being recorded and will be provided to you. So don't you worry about that. And if you have any questions for Chris uh, about landing page optimization or things like that, feel free to write them in the chat pod and we will be taking note of them. Uh, during the webinar and then uh, at the end of the webinar we're going to have a Q&A session where Chris will be able to answer uh, some of those questions. So if you don't see your question in the chat pod it's just because we're internally taking note of them and then we'll answer them at the end. So again thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm going to hush now and get back over to the wider funnel team uh, to continue on with a little intro and then Chris can get going. Thanks, Abby. So I'm Jacqueline McDonald, the Community Manager here at WaterFunnel, and I'll be introing the webinar for you today and then passing it on to Chris. So as Abby mentioned, Chris Goward is our presenter. He's the brains behind the Funnel Lift model. He helps clients such as eBay, Magento, and BuildDirect.com lift their conversion rates. And he's the author of the best-selling book with five star stars on Amazon, You Should Test That. Chris started Funnel in 2007 with the idea that agencies should prove their worth instead of basing the decisions on their gut instinct. Water Funnel is a in class services agency with a pure focus on lifting conversion rates for our clients. Before we get started, I just have a couple housekeeping items to mention. As Abby mentioned before, the webinar will be recorded and Get Responsible will be sending an email with the recording on Monday. If you'd like questions during the webinar, please do so. You can use the, gen the moderated chat window to your left. We'll be, we'll be watching the window and approving all comments that won't be distracting during the webinar. For questions, I like them for the Q&A period at the end of the webinar with Chris, so you may not see them in the, in the general chat window. But rest assured, we do see them and we'll add them to the Q&A period. Finally, we're giving away a free copy of Chris's book, you should test that. If you'd like to enter to win, go to www.waterfunnel.com slash win. So that's it for housekeeping. I'm going to pass it off to Chris to begin the presentation. Great. <clears throat> thank you, Jackie. And thank you, Get Response, for your invitation to present today. So I know Jackie's going to put that URL as well into the chat window, I believe. So you can go ahead and enter to win a copy, and we'll be uh, making that draw. So one of you will get a copy of the book. I'm just going to turn on video so we can see your say hi to everyone there. And uh, we'll get right on to the content. We've got some really interesting case studies and frameworks to share with you today. Uh, I'm going to start with a little example. We're talking about landing page optimization today. And we've got a few examples that I think uh, will blow your mind today with some of the learning that we're gathering here. So all we do at Wider is test on thousands uh, to find out what really works. And this is an example from a landing page. This is a snippet from a landing page where uh, the goal was to get visitors on the page to sign up, enter their email address, and sign up for a monthly subscription for makeup delivery. Now, uh, this is one of the, the control page, and we often start with a simple test when we're starting with a new client. And this one, we're actually testing buttons. So this says, get brand new, can't miss color and beauty every month, enter your email to get your welcome box free, and you enter your email address and click submit. Now, everyone knows that submit buttons are the worst possible button, right? You never want to ask your customers to submit to you. Why would you do that? Um, so, and, and this is a well-known best practice in conversion optimization that you should get rid of submit buttons. So this was a simple test where we wanted to test two different buttons 
And normally, we don't spend a lot of time testing buttons, but, but this was an interesting hypothesis that we could uh, aim at different value proposition approaches with different buttons that, that hit different aspects. So this one says become a maven, which tied into the brand and, and uh, had a sense of inclusion. It was a social signal that you could join a tribe that you could relate to. And the other one is a sense of urgency. It says, I want in. So rather than just guessing that one of them would be better, now, if we followed any practices, become a maven should work the best because it's tied to the brand, it's also action oriented, uh, and it's uh, very uh, also ties into that social signal. When we actually tested it, it turned out that the social signal button reduced signups by six and a half percent. So we actually found two buttons that are worse than submit buttons. So <laughs> this is really interesting, right? Um, uh, nobody's going to publish a blog post about this, but it's true. The thing is, you should be skeptical of best practices because they don't work. Best practices only apply to a certain context in a certain situation. Sometimes, turns out, submit may be a better button than another one you may want to try. Now, of course, we continue to test and found many buttons and whole different landing page designs and approaches and flows that worked dramatically better. That was just one example of where uh, of why you need to turn test our best practices into tested practices because then that's the only way you know what actually works in your situation let's look at another example this is for iron mountain this is a landing page from paid search campaigns and email marketing where they come to this landing page for for offsite data backup storage and recovery so it's a data backup service for corporations and Iron Mountain is a B2B company, so they're, what they're doing is generating leads for their sales team. So variation A, we called concise benefits, where uh, it's got an introduction to Iron Mountain and the service, and it's got the, the call to action on the right, and then the content below is presenting the overall value proposition of working with Iron Mountain, uh, building credibility and, and with some proof points. Variation B, is the same content, we move that value proposition to the right-hand column and put more information about the service that they're actually getting. So it's a, a longer copy page. And what we were testing here was to find out how much information people need before becoming a lead, becoming a qualified lead. And so this is a, a, a spectrum of content test. That's the hypothesis behind it. So I believe we have a poll to open up for this one. I'm going to ask Jackie if we have a poll to open up to see which one you think. We're going to test your a couple times here today and find out what you think won between the concise benefits of working with Iron Mountain or more information about the service. So you can go ahead and vote right there while we wait for a few seconds here. So variation A was the concise benefits of the overall value proposition of Iron Mountain. And variation B was the same information plus more about the service and then becoming a lead. So do we have the votes coming in? I think Jackie's monitoring your votes coming in right now. Yeah, we can see those coming in on the screen. And uh, she'll go ahead and count the votes. Yeah, we see that coming in. So go ahead and let's take a look at what you guys voted for. All right, so we see the survey results. And look at that, it's pretty fairly even with uh, 24 to 34, slight, variation B has a slight lead in the survey results. So let's see what actually happened. Take a look at these test results. Turns out, there we go, variation B did win dramatically, a 49.9% increase in the lead generation conversion rate. That means essentially 50% more leads coming into the sales team from the same amount of traffic. Now, think about that for a second. These are free leads. They've already paid for them to arrive on the landing page. And all they're doing is getting an extra 50% of them to raise their hand and become a qualified lead for their sales team. And here's another example. This is another paid search landing page where we had three variations in this case. Variation A says this is also for a data backup uh, and review service. Uh, variation A, is the request a free quote button on, on the right. Variation B, we're isolating against that to find out if the button 
or an embedded form work better? So as a single step or two step landing page funnel, the best performer. Now variation C is isolated against A to test the call to action, where variation A asks for a request to quote. Variation B uh, has a call to action to download a white paper. So what we're doing is testing the hypothesis that content marketing will get more leads into the funnel versus going straight for the, the quote request. So now again, we have opportunity to vote. So go ahead and open up that poll, Jackie, and we'll see which one of these three won. Was it variation A with the request to quote button? Variation B with request to quote form embedded? Or variation C with the white paper download content marketing approach? Go ahead and put your votes in. Let's see what you think won. Is it A, request a quote button, B, request a quote form, or C, white paper content marketing call to action? We see your votes coming in. Very interesting. So go ahead and just click on one of those options. All right, we've got the results. Oh, look at that. Dramatic vote win for variation C. So most of you are, are, are looking at variation C as the winner, content marketing, right? Everyone knows content marketing works. Good, so let's take a look. When, of course, we don't just make assumptions, right? Every good smart marketer today will take these as hypotheses to actually test them. And the way we test them is through a controlled test with uh, every visitor that's arriving on the page being randomly selected to see different variations at the same time and then we can track the conversion rates to find out which one of these actually wins. So when we actually tested it, it turned out that variation B had a 404% increase in lead generation. That's a four times the leads of the control page. Now they also learned something, that the embedded form in this case, for this type of audience and this type of, of uh, uh, product and conversion, uh, and this number of fields worked better than the button. And they also found out that request a quote worked better than the content marketing approach. So even though a best practice may be that content marketing is the flavor of the day, and content marketing plays a role, absolutely. At wider funnel, use content marketing all the time. But it's not always the right approach. Sometimes people just want a quote. Sometimes people are ready to buy. And by the way, they're also more qualified if they're asking for a quote. Right? They're raising their hand and saying, hey, I'm interested in the service. So that's something that Iron Mountain can build on. Now that's an insight. But their marketing team can change their marketing strategy to focus on uh, uh, thinking about what are the right calls to action for the audience. It's not always about the early stage content. Conversion optimization has been undervalued generally and in most companies. People are still thinking about just button tweaks and, and colors and headlines when really there's two things conversion optimization should be doing. Dramatic conversion rate and lift, absolutely, but also proven insights that can impact your marketing and your company. That's smart conversion optimization. And landing pages in particular are the best place to learn about insights because these are virgin eyeballs coming into your website and you can find out what motivates them to act. Let's take a look at another example. We've got some audio issues here. But let's take a look at this example. We've got, uh, this is a product landing page on mobile for uh, subscriptions. Another similar business model as the earlier one. This is a, a mobile landing page for a mystery box of monthly uh, toys and gadgets for aimed at, at geeks and gamers. And uh, the goal was to lift subscribers and the profit for this this company. But the question is, what motivates this target audience to act? What motivates them to subscribe? So why does your customer subscribe, right? How do you find out which motivators drive this person? Is it intrigue? Is it the quality of the product? Is it the service of the company? Is it the concept of being included socially, like we saw in, in an earlier example? Is it about the fun? There's a, a mystery of getting this, this box of toys and gadgets every month. What motivates them to act? 
So this is an opportunity for testing. Now you're going to see a theme throughout here because we believe that the, the discipline of testing in every aspect of your company is what separates great companies from mediocre today. So we're going to talk about value proposition. I'm going to show you two frameworks today that you can use to understand and test your value proposition. And the best place to understand your value proposition is on your landing pages. So this example, we started with this control page. It says Epic Geek and Gamer Gear, delivered monthly, and you could subscribe. Right? So that was the control page. What we wanted to do is start again on this one. This one started with a button test. Now I've got two examples of button tests. It makes it look like all we do is button testing. But these are actually pretty rare. But simple examples that show some isolations that lead into insights. Um, and so we took this subscribe. It's a very clear, you know, simple explanation of what you're doing. You're subscribing. But variation B, we swap that to say join now. What we're doing is trying to get a hint about whether joining a community is more powerful than just subscribing to a service. And then the third option was select your plan, which is much more tangible. It's much more about, uh, about finding out what you get. Right? The, it's more about value. So which one of these had the best performance? Turns out that Join Now had a slight increase in sales, subscriptions. Select Your Plan, the tangible one, actually had a dramatic decrease. So now we've learned something potentially. So there is some increase in revenue, and that's good. But even more importantly, we've learned about what drives this audience. Maybe. There's a hint there about their social inclusion. So now let's take it even further and change the control page to be the join now version and then add two more variations where we build onto that button a new uh, value proposition headlines where this headline ties in social inclusion with something more tangible and clear about what you're going to get. A monthly box of Geek and Gamer Gear, right? That's as clear as you can possibly get uh, about uh, what you're getting. So it's a tangible attached to social inclusion. Variation C moved the needle even more on social inclusion with something we call social proof. That's where it says, join 110,023 Geek and Gamers just like you. Now, that's not even talking about the product at all, but it's talking about the community you're joining. Now, why would that work better? Idea, but we already had a hint about what the value proposition might be for this target audience. And when we tested it, it turned out to be true. That in fact, joining a community, joining a tribe for this target audience was actually even more powerful than what they're getting as a product. A month box of Geek and Gamer Gear. 14% more every day were signing up with this headline. Just by changing the headline. Now, Robert Cialdini has been talking about the motivational drivers of persuasion for a long time. And he has said years ago that social proof works is that we put, a, put trust in the collective knowledge of the crowd, whether or not that's a good idea. But it works to motivate people. Social proof works for this target audience, but it doesn't always work. And in fact, social proof is just one of many dozens of motivational tactics that you can use within your marketing to drive people to act. But you can't use them all. You can't, can you imagine a page where you tried to use all of these psychological triggers? It would be a mile long. So you've got to find out which triggers, which motivational aspects are important for your target audience. And that's done through testing powerful hypotheses. So I'm going to show you two frameworks today, as I said, that are going to help you to test important questions and value proposition components. Now, so how do you know which value proposition you should test, right? You can't, you can't test everything. The most important uh, aspect that will determine your success in your landing page optimization is the questions you ask. Asking powerful questions will lead to powerful results. You can't just test randomly and, and try and look for blog posts of you know, top tips for conversion optimization. That won't work because it doesn't address the particular context of your customers and your product and your competitive environment and your situation. So I'm going to show you now a framework to understand how to test 
powerful value proposition questions, okay? I call it pods, pops, and poys. It's, it sounds complicated, perhaps, but it's, it's not. Essentially, it's a Venn diagram. So you've got your prospect's desires in the top, your features, and your competitor's features. Now, most marketers are focused in the central area where what your customers want and what your prospects what want overlaps with what your competitors offer and what you offer. So this is called the red ocean. This is where uh, your competitors are offering something that your, your customers want and you're out there too saying, hey, I've got, this, I've got the same thing as my competitors. I can do that. I've got low prices. I've got great service. I've got all the same things. Right? Everyone's fighting over these few fish. That's the red ocean. Where you should be focusing is in this other area called your pods, your points of difference. So avoid the points of parity because everyone's out there competing. Points of difference is where what your prospects want overlaps with what you do and no one else is there. Your competitors can't touch those fears. Those are powerful. That's the blue ocean. That's where you've got clear sailing to take market share and to own your customers and get their loyalty. Now, a lot of times in engineering companies, they get stuck into another area where they've spent a lot of time focusing and building a product, a bunch of features that they've you know, poured their blood, sweat, and tears into, and no one cares. That's called your points of irrelevance. So definitely don't get stuck down there. But spend your time thinking about what are the points of difference that you can focus on. And you can actually brainstorm in this area by making a list with three columns. It says, what do our customers and prospects want? What do our competitors offer? What do we offer? And look for the overlaps and look for the points where you have a differentiator that you can test. And then you'll come out with various aspects that are different about you. And you can go out to the market on your landing pages, test those different aspects, and then find out which ones actually motivate your prospects to act. All right. So I want to talk a, a little bit about warning signals because if you don't test properly, you can back yourself into a corner and do things the wrong way. Now, I'm going to show you another framework in a moment that uh, will uh, encapsulate all of the aspects to help you create powerful hypotheses to test, powerful questions. And I'm going to show you an example of how to do that. So we were, have been working with Magento for a couple of years now. Um, you might know Magento as an e-commerce platform, but we're actually working with them to help generate more enterprise leads for Magento itself for customers to sign up for clients and retailers to sign up as Magento customers. So Magento is our client, part of eBay. And uh, Magento is the leading e-commerce platform, largest in the world. And we've been working with them on their website and their landing pages on all aspects. Now, this is one example where they have a landing page, and the goal is to get more visitors to fill out this lead form to request a demo and become a qualified lead. So the challenge was, how do we optimize this page? What should we test on a page that's obviously been created by a, a talented team of, of designers and marketers? So when you have a question to ask about your optimization, you might be asking, where should I test? What should I test? How do I test? What you want to do, rather than going out and looking for tips and tricks, because what we could have done is gone out and said, oh, well, enterprise B2B landing page. What are the top 20 things we should test on enterprise B2B landing pages? And we get a, a bunch of lists of useless blog posts that probably haven't been tested before. But more importantly, think about how, uh, how to answer this question using a framework. So I'm going to show you now a framework that you can use and apply in your business right now that shows the conversion factors, the conversion barriers that are impacting your business today. And then I'll show you how we use this uh, for, for Magento and, and all of our clients, Spider Funnel. So it's called the Lyft model. And some of you may have seen this. Um, the Lyft model has become the most popular conversion optimization framework uh, in the industry. And uh, what it shows is the six conversion factors that are impacting your conversion rate right now. The core of it is the value proposition. That's the vehicle for your conversion rate lift. Now, the value proposition, you probably have your own definition of it. I like to think of it as an equation that goes on the product line. 
between the perceived cost of taking action and the perceived benefits. If the perceived benefits outweigh the cost, they'll have motivation to act. And if it's the other way around, if the costs are greater, they'll bounce right away. Now, the perceived part is very important. There's all the intangible as well as the tangible features. Right? You've got your brand aspects, the experiences they've had with your company before, even your graphic design and, and, and social, uh, uh, social uh, cues. And so the value proposition determines the potential for your conversion rate lift. And you can test within it. All the other factors enhance or detract from value proposition. So relevance is relevance to the source media. Right? Does the headline match what they clicked on and how they got to that page? Clarity of the presentation, clarity of the eye flow and the imagery and the call to action. And anxiety and distraction reduce your conversion rates. So anxiety is anything that creates uncertainty in the prospect's mind about taking action. Distraction is anything that redirects attention from the primary message, anything that confuses and reduces clarity. And then urgency is why should they act now? And you'll have aspects of all of these that may be impacting your conversion rates now, and you can test them to find out which ones are important to focus on. Now, there are actually 27 sub-factors, but starting with these six will give you the best start on creating powerful hypotheses. Now, let's show you uh, an example using this Magento landing page. So here's the landing page. And what we always do at Wider Funnel is, is bring our strategists into the room. We've got a team of uh, 23 here that we work on all of our clients to, to come up with the best ideas to improve. And uh, you might see some examples in here of things that might be impacting your landing page and you can apply to your business. So the, uh, there wasn't a, a clear eye flow. There's some disjointed uh, alignment and, and nothing that draws attention to the main message they should, should focus on. There are a bunch of different graphical signals on the page. The headline, actually it should be up here, even the button or that uh, little arrow skips it over, but uh, the headline up here, you're going to skim over because you're, as a, a, a human, your eye is drawn to a person's face first. So you're going to skip right over the headline and miss the main value proposition point. Uh, the video doesn't give a lot of information about why this, this company, Warby Parker, chose Magento. So maybe there were some quality issues there. And the form here gives a sense of a false bottom. So you're looking at the whole page right now, but when the fold is actually here about halfway through the form, and it looks like this is the bottom of the page, but the main value proposition features of the tool of Magento are actually below this area. So a lot of people aren't scrolling down. When we looked at our, our click heat map analysis, a lot of people aren't scrolling down past that area. Uh, the copy doesn't match the incoming traffic source, so there's a relevance issue. No mention of the demo or free trial on the page. There's no backup content of value proposition building up why uh, the visitor should watch the video, why that's important. There's more. Secondary calls to action. The video is actually taking over prominence versus the primary. Uh, the key differentiators over competitors is, is missing from the page. No prominent form headline. So this form headline is, is uh, uh, small and not very compelling. And there's no mention of free. So there's a whole bunch of more. Generally, we're coming up with dozens and dozens of, of these lift uh, points that are barriers to conversion. Now, the next step is you've got a whole bunch of ideas here, right? After you've analyzed the page, what do you do with that? You need to turn these weaknesses into strengths to create hypotheses. So within each of these, some of them are probably problems. Some of them are hypotheses that may be proven false. And now we're going to test that. So I'm going to show you a few variations that we tested for Magento and see if there might be some ideas here that, that uh, you can build on as well. So the first variation is what we did is that we call this variation, it, the, the type of variation, the variable cluster. So we're, we're changing several different aspects to try and get a higher watermark, a higher benchmark for continued improvement. And what we did is we... Uh, made a, a more clear value proposition about why this case study is important. Warby Parker managed 500% growth using Magento Enterprise. Now that's compelling. That's a reason to look at this case study. Uh, we drew, reduced the size of the case study area at the same time, increased the prominence of the form by moving it up above the fold completely. So also reduced it to a one-step form. This on the previous on the troll, 
went up to a second step on the form to complete it. And then added the privacy statement, we're not going to spam people. Um, so this was the entire variation A landing page, what it looked like, right? More, a better uh, headline, uh, more prominent form. And, uh, and then variation B, we tried something, uh, uh, an isolation against the case study approach to focus on clear value proposition bullet points. Why Magento Enterprise is, what are the most important features, the most important pods for Magento Enterprise? And uh, so the question is, which one won? Now, of course, we're going to test this, right? Uh, do we have a we have a poll? This one, okay. Open up the poll and take a look at which one you think won. So, was it the case study approach, or was it the value proposition bullets approach? So, vote A for case study with the stronger headline and the Warby Parker uh, case study prominence, moving the left the column or sorry the uh, form up above the fold, or variation B, isolating the value proposition bullets. So let's see, you've got your votes coming in. Go ahead and vote. I see some of you are, are uh, chickening out and voting. Lost your confidence there. <laughs> Just go ahead and vote. We're not tracking it. We're not, we're not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to tell you if you lost. All right, go ahead and vote in, and we'll, let's take a look at the results. Okay, who, what'd you vote for? Wow, it's again, fairly evenly split. You've got variation A, 31%, and variation B with 24% of the vote. And half you voted, half of you have decided to chicken out on that. <laughs> uh, right, great. Well, that's a good result because now, imagine, right, you're sitting in your, your room, your designer has come in or your agency has come in and presented to you your new landing page design concepts. How do you choose which one goes live? And a lot of people are using the HIPPO method. You've heard of the HIPPO method, right, the highest paid person's opinion. And they point to the one that they like and that's what goes live. Other people are using the black turtleneck method, right? The guy in the room with the black turtleneck and sunglasses. But they're the ones that the one that goes live. But no, you're a smart marketer and you're going to pick by testing it, finding out what really works. So we tested this and found out that variation B actually won. Removing the case study completely and consolidating a, a value proposition feature list, a bullet list of pods from Magento Enterprise actually dramatically lifted their qualified lead generation. 115% lift over the control. Now it also had all of the improvements that we had made in variation A, but uh, continued the improvement dramatically over, over that case study. Okay, so the point is, the best way to get results is to test to solve the conversion barriers for your situation. Your situation, your landing pages are unique, and what you to get you need to ask powerful questions rather than just chasing after tips and tricks on what you should do for your landing pages. There is no best landing page design. There is no best landing page copy or content or approach. Sometimes video works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes images work. Sometimes it doesn't. The tactics should support the strategy. The tactics are. How do I communicate my value proposition pods with clarity? That's how to get the best results. When you look at this example, you know what? Great case study, compelling headline, great features, but removing all of that distraction and focusing on the pods dramatically improved conversion rates. Here's another example for Magento where uh, this was a page after uh, on any part of the website when they click on the try the demo free, they land on this page. So this is selling people on why they should take, get a demo from Magento Enterprise. So they've been anywhere on the site, clicked on that, try the demo, landed on this page. So it's part of the conversion funnel. It's probably after the landing page, but it's part of their funnel for con converting. And so just like before, how do you test and improve this step in your conversion path? You need to start by analyzing and asking powerful questions. So there were a bunch of problems that we identified. You may notice some of these things on your conversion paths. The headline is very long. It's wrapping three lines. That's the maximum you'd ever want to do and probably a little bit too long for this stage in the funnel. 
try the demo isn't in the headline, even though they've just clicked try the demo. That's a massive relevance point. Now, when you, if you understand how your customers navigate, when they're searching for something, they stop understanding what they're reading and they move into a pattern recognition mode. It's called um, a scent trail. And because your prospects are animals, they're out there sniffing for information. And, and the way that works in our brain is pattern recognition. They look to match what they see with the concept, the meme that they have in their brain. And so that was missing on this, this headline. There's a lot of copy on the, on the page persuading people to try the demo. They clicked on try the demo already. Maybe, that, maybe that's not needed. Maybe that's overkill, right? Small font uh, makes it difficult to read. If the more work someone has to do to read your content, the less likely it is they're going to, and the more likely it will bounce off. A whole bunch of other points. There's no mention of instant access. Uh, the call to action copy is not focused on the, the action. There's no hover treatment. The CTA button really is is, is lacking. It's far down the page. Uh, demo is uh, being used in, in two different ways. Demo Magento Enterprise versus view the demo or try the demo could be interpreted differently. And unfortunately, there's no mention of free on the page. It, it's a free demo. Most powerful word in language. And, and then here on the, on the right, we've got an image, but there's no caption. Now, captions under images are powerful. That's one of the most read portion of any page is a caption under an image. And so they're missing that, what I call action caption. All right. So then when after you click on that demo, you arrive on another page where you actually have to fill out the form to get the demo. So there's some problems on this page too. There's this distraction. They're, they've already clicked on the try the demo button. They've gotten to the try the demo sell page. Now they've clicked and gotten to the form. Now that try the demo button is still there, right? There's more text describing what to do. Uh, the first form field isn't autofocused. If you've got forms, autofocus them. Get make it easier for people. They don't have to click on that first field. You've got a whole bunch of fields. Maybe they don't need, there's another submit button, right? Killing conversion rates in most cases. <laughs> and uh, the call to action design is inconsistent. They have an orange button on the previous page and they got a blue button. Again, a scent trail. It's losing uh, their, that connection. There's a disconnect in design. All of these things add up to make a dramatic difference. Sometimes they're little aspects. Sometimes they're big questions like value propositions. Sometimes it's more user experience questions like we've got here with the, the second step in the gentle form. Okay, so we create new variations. Let's take a look at what we tested for them. Uh, variation A, this was the original. We changed it to be focused on the value proposition. So again, three bullets. A um, much more compelling, concise headline. Try the Magento en en Enterprise demo for free. Three powerful value proposition points. A strong button. Try the Magento Enterprise now. And adding the action caption under the uh, that uh, uh, screenshot image. So these are all the things we did. We referenced the try the demo in the headline. Reduced the length of the headline. Increased the font size throughout the page. Uh, shortened the copy, updated the call to action button, added a link under the screenshot. There was also a second call to action with what we call the action caption, try it now, uh, and including free on the page. So all of these things combined in a variable cluster test to make a dramatic improvement. Now variation B, we actually changed it completely. Reduced the amount of content, pushed it off to the right, put that form right on the page. So combine the form, got rid of that second step, and got them right into filling out the form. The hypothesis here is, hey, they've already clicked on the try the demo, let's just get them right into that form, right? Variation C is another user experience idea, and this is really advanced, something that you might want to try, called the progressive reveal. We invented this a couple years ago, where what happens is uh, you fill out a certain number of forms, and then once you're near the end, the rest of the form fields appear, so it creates momentum and also reduces anxiety by making the form seem short and approachable, and then progressively reveals that there are more fields to fill out. That's a powerful hypothesis you can test. So after you fill out a few forms, the fields, the rest of the fields appear. We, uh, we've uh, uh, innovated this. Um, one of our strategists came up with this a couple of years ago to work with some of our clients on, and, and it's 
it's worked out very well for a lot of them, especially with longer forms. And then variation D, we remove high column content, reduce the distraction, get people filling up the form, and, uh, and, and reduce the number of, uh, of elements to look at on the page. Okay, so which one worked? We have a poll for this one. Okay, we do have a poll for this one too. Great. So let's go ahead and test your skills. Was it value proposition focus? Was it integrating the form, variation B? Was it progressive reveal of the form? Or was it removing all the value proposition altogether and get and re remove the distractions with D? Let's go ahead and get your vote. Which one do you think had the highest qualified lead generation conversion rate? Go ahead and put your vote in there now. And you see the votes coming in. Did you pick which one you like? Or are you just picking randomly at this point? <laughs> Go ahead and guess. Guess your conversion skill for. Okay. Jackie's here in the control room controlling your polls. And uh, wow, we've got a, uh, a pretty dramatic preference for variation C. That was the progressive reveal form. Nobody likes A. Oh, this is interesting. So which one won? Are you willing to put money on it? All right. Variation A, increased demo requests by 3.8%. Wow. Oh, variation B, increased it by 32.4%. 32, a third more demo requests. Look at that. C, 79%. We're rolling here. If you voted for C, you give yourself a raise. But D, even more, 94.6% increase in demo requests, nearly doubling the demo requests. That's huge for a company like Magento. But I alluded earlier that if you run your tests incorrectly, you can really be messing up your insights. If we had implemented D, we actually could have hurt the business results. But we're not going to do that. We always look for what is driving revenue for the company. You always want to test for profit. How do you dramatically increase your profit, not just your early state indicators? So variation D, yeah, I got more requests. But when we looked at what got more qualified leads, it turned out variation B had the highest number of qualified leads. So we got a third more demo requests, and a lot more of those were qualified. So what we'd done is we'd improved all of the value proposition messaging, integrated the form, and that had the biggest impact. So value proposition of the demo and a, a Magento Enterprise was still important. So we'd proven also, get, got an insight that, you know what, people weren't quite ready to fill in the form at that stage. They still needed some motivation, and those became higher quality leads. Variation D without the value proposition, yeah, it got more people through the form, but more of them were less lower quality. They weren't the right people to be filling out that form. All right, so takeaway is you want to optimize for what really matters. Don't optimize for early stage clicks. Don't optimize for landing, for getting to a page or for adding a product to a cart or things that don't generate revenue. Optimize for what matters for your business. Okay, and the other tip is that optimization is never done. None of these pages were the best pages yet. There's still room for improvement. So we continue testing, and that's what we do. At Wider Funnel, we work with high traffic companies to rapidly cycle iterative testing to continuously learn what works and what doesn't. And all of those patterns were, uh, for thousands of tests, we're building these frameworks and patterns of motivational principles. So for Magento, we then dr drilled into the uh, the headlines to find out the value proposition components. These are powerful tests, even though they might sometimes be simple. We spend a lot of time thinking about the right wording, and our strategists take insights from other tests and other clients and other industries to find out the types of wording that's going to lead to better improvement. So get instant access, increased uh, urgency, and increased conversion rates by another 5%, additional 5% on top of that. Uh, social proof headline, in this case, hurt conversion rates. So what I was saying before, social proof worked great for that subscription product. Terrible for Magento. Didn't work at all. Hurt their results. 
Good thing we tested it so we could eliminate that idea. Moving the right-hand content, uh, actually in this case, when we found out an, an, another way of presenting the value proposition, increased the conversion rates by 11%. Moving the top navigation, they're already in a form funnel. Once they're in that, uh, that, that funnel, that focus on filling out the form, removing the navigation helped conversions. It, it was just a distraction. So the before and after, this was the two steps in their conversion path. In the end, removing all the proposition headline, making uh, UX improvements to the form, increase their conversion rates. That's the, the ultimate, uh, current state of that page. And we continue to test from there. All right. So those were a bunch of quick examples on things you can take away to apply to your business, two frameworks you can use, some examples that hopefully you can, you can take insights from and apply to your business. Now we have some time for Q&A. You know, Jackie has a couple announcements to get into before we do that and then we'll uh, look at all the questions you've been asking and, and, and get to those in a moment. Thanks, Chris. So as Chris mentioned, that marks the end of our main presentation. But before we start the Q&A, I just have a couple announcements. So as I mentioned before the webinar, Chris Goward is the author of the best-selling book, You Should Test That, with five stars on Amazon. And we're giving away a free copy of the book if you go to www.waterfunnel.com slash win. So I'll be adding that link to the chat panel on the left. So just click it if you'd like to enter to win. If you'd like to learn more about WaterFunnel, email iwant at waterfunnel.com or visit our website www.waterfunnel.com. So I'm going to start the Q&A period with Chris. So our first question that came from the audience today was, Chris, do you find that there are more opt-ins when there is only an email address to enter versus a name and an email address? Question. Typically, we're seeing that um, that and the risk conversion rates. It depends, though, on if you look at is the quality of information important for you. Do you need to qualify your leads and maybe a couple uh, field actually a net benefit for the business? But usually, you're going to find that just asking for one field, just email, is going to get uh, higher higher opt-in. So it's a good idea to test, right? Great. Okay. Our next question is for those of those that are um, using a one-man company or it's a small company, how do you test successfully with a low budget? Yeah, so uh, you're talking about a, a small company with lower budget and uh, probably lower traffic. And so usually what we find is that is that the effort and time that you have to uh, to put towards conversion optimization scales along with your traffic, uh, which works because with lower traffic, it's going to take a little bit longer to to get statistically significant results. And you always want to, that's another thing I haven't really talked about today, is the technical side of testing and how you need to get statistically significant results using proper controlled methods. Um, and you want to run until you get that 95% statistical significance. On a lower traffic website, that's going to take longer. And so you may be able to devote the, the whatever time you have to building some, some tests and then letting them run until they get results. And then maybe by that time you'll have a little bit more bandwidth, some more resources to go in and, and run your next round of tests. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have tests running. Even at a smaller company, lower traffic, if you don't, you're not going to get results very fast, there's no downside in having a few A, B tests, A, B, C, D tests, A, B, N tests we call them. Uh, out in market, and then when you do get results, you'll have some insights that you can build on. So it's everyone should be testing, and it, it's very easy to get a simple test in market. Now the difference is uh, the experience you have will lead to the more 
the, the insights that you can get into your tests. How powerful are your questions? You can ask very simple, run very simple tests. They might be headline tests focusing on value proposition. It might be really powerful for your business. It doesn't take a lot of effort to set up those tests, but it does take a lot of insight. So go ahead and start with those. There are some easy tools you can, you can uh, run those kinds of tests with today. Uh, the next question we have, Chris, is how do you drive and split the traffic among the different tests? Okay, so yeah, I guess the question about the tools. Uh, so the way it works today is there are a lot of tools out there that, that enable this type of testing. And what how it usually works is you take a little piece of JavaScript, put it onto your... Uh, your website into your code, usually near the header or sometimes the footer, depending on how you have to do it. And and then once that script is installed, you can go into the tool and modify your pages and set up variations. So then that tool will randomly select different visitors that arrive on the page to see the different variations and then track the goals that you want them to be measured by. So your conversion goals, whether it's the a thank you page in the year after your, your cart, or whether it's a thank you page after they fill in a form, whatever action is that makes sure that they're a conversion. And then the tool will track the statistical, statistical significance and the conversion rates between the variations. So your visitors will come to the page, they'll see it, the different ones that the tool serves, and then they'll be tracked throughout their visit and throughout multiple visits, if, if necessary, to get to their conversion. Thank you. And I think that answers another question that we just got in on how to implement parallel A-B tests in a, on a small website. So we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, what is a good sample size for a test? So sample size is going to depend on your situation. Uh, there will be um, the, the what, achieving statistical significance depends on a few things. One is the number of conversions you're going to get into your sample, uh, the conversion rate, and the difference in conversion rate between the variations. So if you end up with a high difference in the conversion rate, you need a lower sample than if, you, uh, if the conversion rates are very similar. And so by testing dramatically, you can test with a smaller sample size. Now the good thing is the tools today track your conversion rates as you run and will, will, uh, will tell you when you've achieved statistical significance, when you have a higher, high enough sample size. If you want to set goals beforehand so you know roughly what your, your, your sample size is expected to be and test whether that achieves statistical significance. Usually, as a rule of thumb, you're going to find you need between 100 and 1,000 conversions per variation to achieve statistical significance. Now, that's a huge range, and that's why what I, what I mean when I say it depends on the difference. If you have a high difference in the conversion rate. So if you've tested dramatically and, and you're making a big difference, you might only need as few as 50 or 100 conversions. But if, the, if it's not as dramatic and the differences are small, you might need a lot more. Great, thank you. Um, so our next question is about heat maps. And what are some good, good heat map tools that the Get Response audience should be looking at? Yeah, there are a few of them out there now. Uh, the most popular one is crazyegg.com, and it's a click heat map analysis tool where you can just very easily go and subscribe and put a little piece of script on your page, and it'll track where everyone clicks on the page. Um, there's also Clicktail, which does click heat maps. It also does user recordings, so you can see you can actually see individual users uh, as they're filling out forms and clicking on on buttons and where they run into barriers. Another one similar to that is called Session Cam, uh, but Crazy Egg is, is really focused on the click heat, and it's the most affordable option of those three, um, but it doesn't show you the full video recordings. Now, I know we've just got about five minutes left, so we'll have time for maybe one or two more questions. Okay, so our next question is about segmentation and demographics. 
So um, have you found any difference in male versus female prospect motivations in landing pages? Or maybe you could um, explain just general demographic differences that you might find in conversion. Male versus female conversions. I have not seen a significant difference in the conversion rates between male and female targeted uh, services. Um, obviously, the products that are going to be targeted towards males and females will likely be different, and if, if that's a significant segment. Um, uh, but different segments can lead to different results, and if you can track your segments by uh, demographics, then you can you can look for sensitivity and what so the way we'll approach implementation generally is to to see there are two ways to define your segmentation. One is pre-planned segments, and the other is post-planned. With pre-planned segments, you're going to go in and make hypotheses and say and and look at the different ways you can identify your segments coming in and create different uh, presentations and test whether those different presentations targeted at the segments actually perform better. So that's a pre-planned segmentation test. The other way to do it is to run your tests and then track the different demographic segmentations, the, whatever it is, demographics, psychographics, uh, source media, device access point, all of these things can be tested, geography as, as potential segments. Look at the results of your tests by variation and look at the segments by variation and see if there is uh, any difference. If there are some segments that perform dramatically different on one variation versus another, uh, then you might be able to see a, a reason to create different segment messages. There might be different motivations, right? So the pods might be different uh, for different segments. And, and this is a complex and very popular topic, and actually we're planning on doing another webinar in the next couple of months at Wider Funnel on segmentation in, entirely focused on this topic because it's really interesting. And we have some really great case studies actually showing how the different segmentation methods can really, really effectively. Um, so if you sign up on our blog, you'll get access and notification when that comes out. It's widerfunnel.com slash blog, and Jackie can put that into the chat window as well. And uh, we'll make sure you get access to that that uh, segmentation webinar if you want more information about that. So there's just about two minutes left in our hour today. We don't think we have any more time for questions. But before I do pass it back to Abby, just really want to thank the attend the audience today for all the great comments and all the great questions. And as we noted um, in the chat and on the webinar. We have an, an archive of webinars on our website, so that's widerfunnel.com slash free resources slash webinars videos, which I'll post the link in the chat. We're also giving away a free copy of Chris Goward's book, You Should Test That. And if you go to www.widerfunnel.com slash win, you can enter to win. And then finally, as Chris just mentioned, a great place for conversion optimization resources is our blog. So that's www.waterfunnel.com slash blog. So I've just added those links into the chat panel and I'll pass it back to Abby to close. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you guys all took, you know, I think a great hour of your days uh, for all of the expert. So I want to thank you guys again. Uh, we have reached our hour, and I want to thank you again. As promised, you know, many times, all of you will get a replay emailed to you, and I think everybody is going to have it on their website for replay as well. Uh, so you'll have access to that, and uh, we will be sending you that on Monday. And also, please enter to win uh, Chris's, you know, the, the option for the free book. That is an incredible option. So please follow all of those links there and get all the good information you can. If you have any questions about GetResponse, feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks so much again, everybody. We really appreciated having you. Please have a great rest of your day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.